So it's been about a week since the much anticipated and controversial release of Pokemon Sword and Shield. And even we were on the fence about getting this game until we texted a friend who finally solidified our decision. We decided we wouldn't play the game on stream because long form games don't really fit our channel or audience when it comes to streaming, but we have been spending a lot of our free time playing Pokemon Shield when we can. And honestly, it's a lot better than we thought it was going to be. We're going to attempt to look at Pokemon Shield on its own merits and what this generation could mean for the future Pokemon. To begin, we wanted to emphasize that our relationship with Pokemon has been a beautiful roller coaster throughout our lives. In fact, we both started during the first generation and both happened to pick Squirtle. We collected cards and other merch, saw a movie here and there, played Pokemon Go on the daily, and while we have skipped a few sequels, we typically always look forward to a mainline release, especially having a first on a console. However, something we haven't been able to ignore while playing is Dexit. If you've been living under a rock or haven't been following Pokemon, like, in any capacity, Dexit is basically referring to Game Freak's decision to not include more than half of all Pokemon in Pokemon Sword and Shield because they can't manage to do the work or whatever. Essentially, you can no longer catch them all. On top of that, a lot of fan favorites and some of our favorites didn't even make the cut. How dare they leave out my Jigglypuff? Honestly, it seems like they probably wanted to get the game out when they did because they had to. Remember, Nintendo isn't Pokemon like Game Freak is Pokemon. And Pokemon is a franchise that isn't solely dependent on just the games. There's a ton of merch and anime, spin-offs, and movies which all kind of feed into each other. Would it be weird to delay a game but keep the anime going, showing off the new region and Pokemon without a game to play along with it? Probably. But we aren't here to debate Dexit ad nauseum. There are plenty of other channels that cover this particular hot button topic in greater detail. So with that being said, let's move on to the game itself. What's the most important aspect of any Pokemon game, or any game in general? Some of you would probably say the gameplay, barring any story-driven walking simulators. And what do we get with Pokemon Sword and Shield? Well, no surprise here, but it's pretty much more of the same with a shinier coat of paint. And for the most part, that's fine. Could it look better? Yes, absolutely. Lest we point out the whole tree debacle. Now, this isn't the first time Pokemon has thrown its hat into the console ring. There were spin-offs in the past, including the much-praised Pokemon Coliseum series and its flashy child, Pokemon Battle Revolution, as well as the oddball Pokemon Gale of Darkness. As always, the main gameplay loop of battling, catching, and collecting both Pokemon and badges is just as solid as it's ever been. But not everything we knew and loved from previous iterations made it. No mega evolutions, not being able to capture high-level Pokemon right away, and Dexit. First of all, you can't turn off XP share. XP share essentially allows the other Pokemon in your party to gain XP without actually having to participate in the battle. In more recent titles, it's been overtuned to the point of trivializing the game's difficulty by overleveling your team. Now, in Pokemon Sword and Shield, not only can you not turn it off, but you can also get XP for every Pokemon you defeat or catch. And despite all that, it totally doesn't ruin the whole game this time. While it's not perfect as some overleveling has occurred, at least in our playthrough so far, it does let you experiment more with your team as you progress through the story without ruining the overall experience. And while Mega Evolutions and Z-Moves do not make a return, Gigamaxing is here to try and fill their gimmicky shoes. While in battle it isn't much more than an I win button, it does serve as the main plot device that drives the story forward. Without spoiling it, the Galar region and its history are intertwined with Gigamaxing and the mysterious energies surrounding it. It may not be the most deep and compelling story ever told in a video game, which is obviously reserved for the legendary game Sonic R, but so far we haven't found ourselves more invested in a Pokemon story since Team Galactic was a thing, which is a plus. Moving on from the story, outside of battling and trading post-game, there are a few things that have been added to spice up your Pokemon journey. And we don't know about y'all, but back in the day, the majority of our trading was with in-game NPCs unless someone in your class had a link cable and wasn't a greedy jerk. And one of the features that has returned is wonder trading. Uh, I mean surprise trading. Same deal here. You put up a Pokemon and you get a random Pokemon back. Small features, sure, but for some reason we find it oddly fun. And yes, chances are you have one of our Wingles or Magikarps. We have no shame. Aside from other social media styled interactions, Game Freak sought fit to include real trainers in your game. But temper your excitement here. Each person has a predetermined random line of text to spout at you. But the biggest benefit of this is that they give you free stuff. And who doesn't like free stuff? If anything, at least you can get excited about seeing others. It feels just so ever so slightly less lonely than other generations in the past. 
Also, you guys like Breath of the Wild, right? Well, you're in luck because Pokemon Sword and Shield has what can best be described as Breath of the Wild Light in the form of the Wild Area. It's an openish world portion of the game very similar to Hyrule Field from Ocarina of Time. And like Ocarina of Time, there's a bunch of little things you can do in it, specifically between the section off towns, routes, caves, and cities. Camping, cooking curries, gathering berries, oh, and raids, yep, those are all here. This is where you can interact with other players as you team up to defeat the giant kaijus of Pokemon. Honestly, this is probably our favorite part of the game, and we could easily go on and on about this, but then the video would be way too long for the scope we are aiming for. Overall, this generation is shaping out to be a fine addition to the Pokemon legacy, and while we hope for more, and Dexit will never not be a glaring disappointment for those that lost their favorites, looking at you, my sweet, sweet Jigglypuff, Pokemon Sword and Shield has laid the groundwork for some exciting potential we hope to see realized in future installments. Specifically when it comes to the interconnectivity Game Freak seems to be pushing, and the wild area as a whole. Also, if Game Freak decides to do a sequel like they've been doing recently, please give us at least a hundred new Galar Pokemon and bring back some old favorites. Correct us if we're wrong here, but we really don't want to see a full price story expansion with a couple of bells and whistles added. Oh, and no Pokemon stick or gun or flail or Megaton hammer? For $60? New games, please. Okay, thanks, bye. And don't forget, there are new Glob Squad hoodies as well as other holiday items in our merch store that you can grab right now. Well, that wraps up this video. Please tell us your thoughts on Pokemon Sword and Shield, or if you want to hear more about it from us in the comments below.